Goodbye. Have fun with Mallory. Have fun with Mallory. <laughs> See you later. See you later, yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs>
a high amount in the entertainment or shopping category, mm -hmm. that might be a sign to you that you're spending too much. Yeah, so Jamie and I are not budgeters. We don't like set aside like, okay, every single month we're gonna have this much for entertainment and this much for eating out or whatever. Um, we basically have just built this habit of just trying not to do those things very often. So if you budget for, let's say $100 on clothes every month, at the end of the month, if you haven't spent your $100, you're gonna be like, oh, I have $100 to spend. I'm gonna go spend that, I'm gonna go to the mall. So it's kind of like budgeting sometimes can hurt you in that sense where like you budget for this amount and then if you have it at the end of the month, you feel like you have to use it for like entertainment or food or whatever. And I also don't like feeling limited by that. Like I can't go get lunch with a friend because I didn't budget for it, you know? So it kind of goes both ways. So Jamie and I aren't huge yeah. believers in like strict budgeting, yeah, but kind I, of like changing your mindset around money. Frugality mindset over setting a strict budget is, is more important to us personally. Personally, but, but that doesn't work for everybody. It's just yeah. our personal strategy. And some people really need to budget because they just need help figuring out where is my money going? I have no idea. And that's okay. Like there's nothing wrong with budgeting, but I'll like use it as a tool to help you learn about yourself for sure. Yeah. Well, what about the person who says, I am very strict in my budget. I don't spend any extra money, but I don't have anything left at the end of the month. I can't save. What do I do then? What's my problem? You gotta find ways to make more money. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds harsh because maybe you're working your butt off, but you got you got to find a ways. And that's why on this channel we talk about furniture flipping or pallet flipping or side hustles like we started a wedding photography business. It might take up some of your relaxation time at night or mm -hmm. even cut into your sleep hours or mm -hmm. um, time with friends. And I, I get that. I'm not trying to say that you should have like this horrible life where you never get to relax because mm -hmm. I don't believe in that, but um, definitely you gotta be willing to sacrifice some of those things, mm -hmm. at least like momentarily, to get you to that point where you are making enough money to be able to save and invest. So now that we've covered, um, you know, if you have a spending problem or an earning problem, hopefully by now you've at least figured out which way you lean. Uh, a lot of times it's a combination of both. You may mm -hmm. be spending a little bit too much on entertainment, and then you're also not earning enough, so you're kind of stuck in this in this middle zone. So right. um, just kind of do a self-evaluation and figure out where you fall on that spectrum. Yeah. So after they have figured out what their money situation is, what should mm -hmm. they do? How do you start uh, pursuing well, financial independence once you are aware of your finances? For those of you who aren't super familiar with the term, financial independence is when your passive income from your investments covers all of your basic living expenses. That seems like a really lofty high goal, um, but when you break it down into smaller steps, it's really not so bad. So once you do a self-evaluation, um, you need to figure out, do you need to increase your income or decrease your expenses or both? Um, because you need to have extra money that you can save each month to go towards investments mm -hmm. so that your investments can grow and create passive income for you. What kind of investments should they be looking so, at? So, um, yes, that's a good question. Let me pull out my handy dandy phone here. <laughs> um, I have a couple numbers written down just because I think it, it goes to show you why we believe so much in real estate over stock mm -hmm. investing. So let's say your monthly expenses are $4,000, meaning that's what you need to get by to survive. Um, that's our personal number. Um, so if you were to buy real estate um, and if you had a plan to cash flow $500 each month, which means um, each property will generate 500 extra dollars after all expenses are paid. Mm -hmm. If you can put $500 in your in your pocket per property, uh, you would need eight properties to pay for all your living expenses. Meaning, to become financially independent, you would need eight properties, which sounds very overwhelming to start. Um, but with the stock market, um, you would need to have a lot more than that invested. Um, $500,000 in the stock market will only get you about $1,600 a month in passive income. So, mm -hmm. meaning if you have a half a million dollars invested, you're only gonna be able to withdraw $1,600 a month to keep that balance at $500,000. But what's great about real estate is that you can actually borrow money to invest. So, that's why we love it. And our favorite method to get started is... So, the biggest advice we could give to you if you get nothing else from this video is just you have to find a way to house hack. So what house hacking is, is you buy a house like a duplex that has two units, 
you live in one side and you rent out the other. So the other side will pay for your mortgage or at least part of it, knocking down those live that housing expense, which is generally most people's biggest monthly expense. So for us, choosing to house hack in the beginning of our real estate journey was the biggest thing that we did to really kind of snowball all of our investments and help us gain financial independence. So um, it's something that we for sure recommend. You gotta find a way to do it. If you live in a single family, you still can sell your house and buy a duplex. We did that. We went from a single family to a duplex because we found out that we could go from paying $1,000 a month to paying zero. And over the course of two years, it saved us over $25,000 that we could then invest and continue to snowball and grow that financial independence nest egg. And that's exactly what happened. Yep. So um, it took us eight years. We're not trying to say that next year you're gonna be in a great spot. You know, you might have some a long road of sacrifices ahead of you. But for us, we finally are in this place where we feel like we can do what we want to do. We don't have to work for someone else. We, we like to work, we want to work, mm -hmm. um, but we're working towards things that we're excited about and passionate about um, versus feeling like we have to to pay our monthly expenses. Yeah. yeah, the point of it for us is not to go retire and not work anymore. We don't yeah. want to do that. So that's why our financial independence number is lower. It's just mm -hmm. to cover our basic expenses so that we don't have to go work for someone else. Just to talk about a few of the numbers with house hacking, just so you can kind of get a bigger picture for what it is. A lot of people would still say, that's too big of a jump for me. There's no way I could ever save up for a down payment. Uh, but you don't need to have a 20% down payment. So let's say you live in an area where the housing is really expensive and it costs mm -hmm. $500,000 to buy a duplex. So a lot of people think you need to have that 20% down payment to buy a duplex, um, which would be $100,000 in an area where the house costs $500,000. So, right, which but, is very hard and unattainable for most people. Yeah, it would take you years to save up that amount. Yeah. But people don't know there's other types of financing such as FHA, um, which is a federal loan program that only requires you to put down three and a half percent. So um, three and a half percent on, I gotta get my phone out again. All right, all right. So $500,000. So you'd only need 17,500 for your down payment in a very expensive living area. So that would be like super expensive. Yeah, I mean, compared to the Midwest, we live in the Midwest, so it's a little different here. Your average home price is maybe 250,000, but 500,000 to us seems expensive. So if you only need $17,500, that seems a lot more attainable, at least to me, especially because if you look at some of our other videos, we think it's quite easy to make a thousand extra dollars a month by furniture flipping. Yeah. So you're talking uh, an extra 17 or 18 months before you have enough for a down payment on a house. Yeah, just by so, flipping a few chairs every week. Yeah. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of hope that it's not this astronomical amount you need to come up with to buy a house. You just need to be disciplined for you know a year or two and then you will be able to jumpstart your financial independence journey. Yeah. Because then once you house hack, let's say you're able to offset a thousand dollars a month of your housing costs by renting the other unit out. Now you have a thousand dollars from your house hack and a thousand dollars if you keep furniture flipping. So <laughs> what? now you can save two thousand dollars a month. <laughs> so that's kind of how it snowballs and, and grows yeah. and grows. Um, and that's how we were able to do it in eight years. Right. So, yeah. Um, I mean, we also, so a lot of people will look at us and be like, well, you guys started in 2012 when the market, you know, was really low and it wasn't going crazy. But honestly, when we started in 2012, we were like, oh, I wish we would have started in 2008 when the market was like really bad and really low. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think if you're starting in 2021, people in 2025 might be saying, man, I wish I would have started in 2021. Mm -hmm. You know, so just don't look at where you're at now and be like, oh, it's too late for me because it's mm -hmm. just not. Our, our mentor, actually, our real estate mentor, he started in 2007, right before everything crashed. Yeah. And now he's a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, he, he was, he started right before the crash, just like, you know, a lot of people think a crash is coming soon. Uh, but he still, by being disciplined and working hard, is, you know, way far, way, way, way far ahead of you us. You mean because he overpaid in 2007? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know That's, if I clarified that. Yeah. Yeah. So he overpaid for some stuff in 2007, but it didn't matter. Like, he still is doing extremely well because yep. he started when he started you know yep. so just start today that's exactly. all exactly yes even if you have to pay five hundred thousand dollars for a duplex and come up with that seventeen thousand dollar payment like 
you can do it. The key is just to be able to have lower expenses and then increase your income. If you can do that, you're going to be able to save money quickly and it will just start to snowball. So hopefully uh, by watching this video, you kind of got that information and it made sense to you. If it didn't, please ask us questions down below. We love helping people with this and it is just our goal to be able to help people uh, in their financial journey. So just as a quick recap on everything we just talked about, because I know it was a lot, um, how to get started with financial independence, you have to find ways to make more, spend less, and then house hack. Mm -hmm. Those are your first three steps. Ooh, did I just, I didn't mean to flip you off if I did. <laughs> three steps. And like I said, that down payment for a house is a lot less than you think. So if you can yeah. just be disciplined for a short amount of time, uh, you'll be able to be there a lot faster than you think. So don't give up. You can do yeah. it. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Let us know if you have any questions below. We love to talk to you guys and try to answer anything, any questions you have. So Yes, and if you haven't seen our financial independence journey video, we'll link that below so you can kind of see um, our story. Yeah. See Thanks, guys. guys. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>